With just over 21 billion revenues last year alone and a long-standing history of excellence in the financial services industry, Barclays is one of the world's top banks. But how can you make sure you stand out in your application and get in? Find out in this video. Hey everyone, I'm Bardo from Tapping and today I'm going to share with you what you need to know to get into Barclays. For this video, we've spoken to current Barclays interns and graduates who have given us their advice to help you with everything you need in order to secure that elusive job at Barclays. Okay, before we get started, for those of you that are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to Tap In and hit that notification bell. That way, when we release new videos like these, you'll get notified. Quick question for you. Have you applied to Barclays or any other investment bank? Leave a comment down below and let us know where you applied and what you found difficult. We've timestamped every section of this video, so if you'd like to skip to a particular section, check out the description box below. Now, Barclays is as prestigious and competitive as any one of its board bracket peers. But unlike its peers, it's the only British investment bank. This gives the bank a unique sense of cultural identity. When applying for banking internships, cultural fit is key. In a profession where the hours are as long as banking, approachability, friendliness, and the ability to collaborate are crucial. Underpinning this culture are the Barclays values. So, how can you show that you reflect these values and obtain a highly sought after place at the bank? This video is going to be packed with our top tips on what you'll need to do to get your foot in the door and receive an offer to work with Barclays. Over the course of this video, we'll discuss what you can expect from the penultimate year internship at Barclays. If this sounds attractive, keep listening to find out the two methods of securing an internship and how you can make your application stand out. Firstly, let's run through the various routes you could take to get into Barclays. Barclays have what they call eight career paths which are up on the screen right now. On a spring week, you can come into Barclays and spend a week with the bank working in various divisions and integrate into the full business. If you're successful at your spring week, you're then offered a direct offer onto their summer internship program. Global Head of Recruitment at Barclays had this to say about spring weeks. Our spring interns are vitally important to us because they are the pipeline of talent to bring into our main summer internship. Barclays have an immersive assessment and the most important thing they want you to remember is that banks are not just banks anymore, but they are technology businesses. So whichever path you're coming into, despite not saying technology, in actual fact, you're doing an element of technology. If you're in your first year of uni or in the second year of a four year degree, apply for one of their spring week programs as this is their main channel of recruiting summer interns. Then you have their summer internship where you have a nine week immersive experience and at Barclays, not only do you just come in and do the internship, you're given the development piece. So the first week is spent learning and being upskilled into the different areas and represents an introduction to the bank. Now, on the internship, every individual is assigned a buddy who is your mentor for the duration of the internship. They're usually a current analyst a year or two into their role at Barclays and they'll be your support over the duration of your nine weeks. They'll also check in with your line manager to ensure you're having the right experience, which is comforting when you're on your internship. We'll go through the spring and summer internships in much more detail later on in the video. Then they have their graduate program, which is a two to three year development program. When you start at Barclays, you'll have a three week immersion period of training and then have continual learning in bite-sized portions relevant to the pathway you've come through. The majority of employers have moved in to the apprentice marketing trend and Barclays is no different. This is now a huge area for the bank. If you want to go down this route, you do a two year foundation program where you have a mix of on the job experience while studying. Then they have a higher degree apprenticeship where in the UK they're working with Warwick and Glasgow University where you come in, talk to code and you get a degree. It's a three to four year program working towards that professional qualification that you need. So despite all those different entry routes, all the different pathways, it comes down to your core skills. Do you fit into their culture? Can you do with ambiguity? And do you have a passion for technology? Because it doesn't matter which area you come into, those are the skills that you need and that's why they have an immersive assessment that brings that to life. Barclays run a nine-week summer internship comprised of two four-week rotations. These rotations will be specific to your division. For example, investment banking, markets, cards and payment, research, private banking and overseas services. Hence why the internship isn't structured so you can do one rotation in ECM, part of IBD, and one in credit sales, part of markets. Have a good think about where you feel you'd be best suited division-wise and if you can, start developing an understanding of the products and services offered within each division. Ask yourself, what kind of working environment motivates you to be productive and what kind of news stories fascinate you? For example, working hours and pace between IBD and markets differs tremendously. Some desks and markets would like you to arrive for 6.30 but most desks would typically ask that you arrive by 8 o'clock. 
As markets close, bankers in markets can finish reasonably early and are never expected to work weekends, but the work remains intensive throughout the working day. However, most market desks will be at least half empty by 6pm. In comparison, those in IBD will work from 8am to an undefined time and may find themselves coming into the office on weekends. The work in IBD is far more driven by client demand and thus working patterns are slightly more unpredictable. For prospective applicants who are fascinated by macro events, a role in research might be immensely rewarding. For those who develop sector-specific interests, equity sales might feel particularly attractive. You can expect to be given projects, have your performance benchmarked against how well you adhere to Barclays values, network and attend internal and external speaker sessions. The Barclays values are respect, excellence, service, integrity and stewardship. The culture in any investment bank isn't truly flat, but as the Barclays values is shared by all employees, Barclays colleagues are often very approachable and happy to help you learn. This is a really rewarding environment to be in and it's also financially rewarding as Barclays interns are paid pro rata first year analysis salary and a relocation bonus. This depends on what stage of university you're at. If you're about to enter your first year of university, obtaining a spring week is a great chance to find out if investment banking is something you'd be interested in more broadly and whether Barclays is for you. At the end of your process, there's the opportunity to convert your offer to a summertime internship for the following year. If you're in your penultimate year of university, a summer internship is more suited toward those hoping to obtain a graduate position. Let's demystify Barclays Summer Internship application process as it is longer and more competitive than the former. There are five stages of application process at Barclays, four if you don't really count the offer itself. That's right, the Barclays application process is incredibly streamlined and designed to be as productive as possible. That's why traditional methods of assessment such as evaluating a CV or cover letter have been replaced by more immersive methods. Step one, you'll start the Barclays application process by applying online and they don't have any entry requirements and there's no CV. The only area where they do have an entry requirement is on their higher apprenticeships, which you do need A-level grades to have been completed. But these grade requirements aren't actually from Barclays. They're from their degree partners who have put them in place. Like I mentioned earlier, it's really important to have a think about what you would like to spend nine weeks during summer doing and maybe even the beginning of your career. Step two, the next stage is Business Insight 1. Barclays advises that it will take a few hours to complete, but we thoroughly recommend that you set aside at least 90 minutes. Be very awake as it is an immersive experience. It's a test bespoke for Barclays, so it's unlike the psychometric testing you might see at other banks. That being said, Barclays do provide you with a link to practice, so make sure you do. When you're invited to this stage, you'll have five working days to complete it. Make sure you leave yourself ample time. As there is situational judgment and numerical reasoning, we'd advise that you spend some prep time practicing numerical tests and arithmetic, as well as familiarizing yourself with Barclays values. During the situational judgment test, there will be a video giving an example of a real situation at Barclays. This is followed by a few situational judgment questions around the video. It's usually based on an app, gives you a real insight into a story that is immersive, and you're asked to do more things as you're given more and more information on the story. You're given a variety of scenarios, and then you rank in order what you feel would be the most important. It's from this that they understand whether you fit their culture or do you have the potential to do things in a certain way. Key thing to note here is that they want to know from a Barclays perspective, would you make the right decision from a compliance perspective so that ranking makes a huge difference. In some banks, you'll be ranked on whether you would make the right decision in an extremely stressful situation. So what they do is immerse you in a similar job simulation and assess you to see what your decision making process is like. Then you are given five big pieces of data relating to the video and given a series of numerical questions relating to this data. Some of these numerical questions will require you to use multiple sources of data, so read the question carefully and make inferences or links. This question process then repeats for different videos and scenarios. Finally, you encounter some verbal reasoning questions right at the end of the test, which relates to everything you have done up until that point. Step three is the next business insight phase. This stage is all about finding out what motivates you and how you align to Barclays values and capabilities. It's split into two parts. The first part is similar to stage one, but it's time. And the second part will require your video response to situational judgment tests. Everyone who's applied to Barclays gets the chance to do business insights and you'll be glad to know that everyone who applies to Barclays will get to this stage. So when you get to the second business insight stage, this is perhaps the most immersive aspect of the whole process. 
Barclays literally takes the same story you introduced to in the first stage of the business simulator and brings it all the way through. So on the second piece, when you come through the business insight, you'll be watching real scenarios, be placed in a real business meeting, and be asked to reply to an email in a set period of time. Top tip. Dressing for success, thinking aloud, and being true to yourself are all key factors in determining how well you perform in video interview stages. This is not only specific to Barclays, so make sure you apply this approach across all your video interviews for various applications. In this case, as it's situational judgment, there isn't a whole lot you can do to prepare, but ensuring you come across collected and well-reasoned will help you go the extra mile. Step four, the final stage before receiving a potential offer is the business meeting. This is the stage that will most likely entail a face-to-face -face interview part of the hiring process. So this is really your chance to prove yourself, your commitment, and your interest in the industry. In previous cohorts, a Skype interview or telephone interview has either taken place during stage three or stage four. However, Barclays are unconventional in that the interview is tied into a more immersive experience, which is also tied into what stream you've applied for. There is a mock business meeting tied into a one-on-one -on -one interview. Essentially, you're given a topic a few days beforehand to prepare on. Then you have a 40-minute business meeting to discuss your findings and recommendations based on that. It's similar to a presentation, but should allow for much more free discussion and questioning. After this comes the interview. The interview is strength-based. So make sure you're demonstrating not only your Barclays values, but also the six traits that they're looking for, which are on the screen here. Agile learner, relationship navigator, team collaborator, resilient performer, critical analyst, and numerical interpreter. These traits would have been assessed throughout the previous components of the hiring process. But be prepared that your interview may consist of questions which ask when you've either demonstrated the Barclays values or demonstrated evidence of their traits. You can prepare for this by writing a few key examples of when you demonstrate this in advance of your interview. So you're confident when it comes to the time to articulate them. Be authentic and don't be afraid to draw upon the breadth of your experiences. These experiences don't have to be specifically investment banking or even finance related at all. It is key to demonstrate interest towards the technical elements too. So by all means, do get stuck in that university. But don't limit yourself to experiences you don't feel reflect your whole person. Top tip, keep up to date with the news. It's necessary for you when you're on the job in finance, so the earlier you can make it a habit, the better. But also, if an interviewer is asking you about everyday examples of traits and values that seem abstract and it stumps you momentarily, talking about wider examples of it reflects a general interest without putting you immediately on the spot. This will give you time to think through a more personal example for yourself. For example, being asked about integrity can be tricky to talk about. Now, we'd all like to think we're good people and we try to avoid patting ourselves on the back every time we're a good person. So talking about a wider social issue and then relating it back to you might be a lucrative way to approach this. For example, detention centers for children at the Mexican border were previously funded by an investment bank. They made the decision to withdraw from that, which could be considered really key when you think about the role that banks do and should play within society. Engaging in the initial practice compromised their integrity. Picking a story like this could be an opportunity to reflect your attitudes towards the role of banks and bankers on an individual level. After all, a banker is just an individual in an organization. So in your own experience of various organizations, how have you ensured that you have acted fairly and what keeps you from acting fairly? Some great sources to stay commercially aware are Mogul News. The best stories in award-winning journalism are handpicked and delivered straight to your app. These stories come from sources including The Economist, The FT, and The Times to save you from taking out all those pesky and expensive subscriptions. Finomize will give you the daily briefing of what you need to know straight to your inbox. These stories are articulated in a three minute read, just short enough so that you can get through your morning latte. Spotify podcasts. Your favorite news outlets will often create a podcast which summarizes their key stories and that you can access for free and listen to on your way to class or the gym. However, keep the cultural references brief and to the point to demonstrate confidence in your own answers. Your personal examples are much more important because they're reflective of you. So cultural references are purely to show awareness of key themes in banking. When it comes to illustrating your own examples, be sure to have a coherent structure. Outline the situation you had to face, describe your role in the task and your responsibility in the situation, demonstrate the action you undertook to fix the situation, and finally, describe the final result. If you're asked a question on how you handled a dispute between peers, here's an example of how you can fit in your leadership skills and extracurriculars. A member of the Drama Society was having an issue with their fellow actor. As Drama Society president, it was my duty to sort out the dispute. I invited them both to an informal meeting 
so as not to seem too daunting and ask them to verbally communicate their concerns. It turns out that there was a massive misunderstanding and everything swiftly became cleared up. At the end of the interview, you'll be asked whether you have any questions. Always have a question. It demonstrates your commitment to your own development during a prospective career at the bank. Your employer can only help you as much as you want to help yourself. It also highlights a genuine enthusiasm. Here are a few examples that you might want to know the answer to. What steps did you take to get to your current position? Ask them about their opinion on relevant current affairs. Their experiences working with the company, what they enjoy, what they think may need to be fixed. Step five, Barclays will be in contact to tell you about the outcome of the process. The firm is very keen on coaching people to be successful, so they'll give you an in-depth summary of your feedback. Make sure you take note, and if there are any constructive advice, you seek to implement it. Don't forget to thank all the people who have supported you along the process. Let's round off with some parting advice. No one is trying to catch you up, so be true to yourself. The way you can stand out is by reflecting genuine interest. Developing a genuine interest can only be achieved by preparation and research. The careers website should act as a springboard, but just like any research, whether it's a job application or an essay at university, one source can only ever be your starting point. It's your responsibility to lead yourself down the rabbit hole. Prepare yourself to the point at which you feel confident. Test yourself with friends or family members who might ask why IBD or other types of competency questions. But don't feel like you have to force yourself to go overboard. If you're too rehearsed, you might find yourself stumped when it comes to the real thing. If you're successful in securing an internship, your time on that internship is a learning opportunity. You'll learn about yourself and you'll learn about Barclays. Learning what you don't find rewarding is just as important as finding out what you do. Go in with an open mind and you'll find success no matter what. So guys, this leads us to the end of the video on how to be successful in your application to Barclays. We really hope you found it useful. Make sure you check the link on our website or in the description box below. We've written a detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to secure an internship with Barclays and whilst you're there, consider signing up and joining the Tapping community. Thank you guys for watching. We'd like to say a massive thank you to Zara and Valmik, who are former and present Barclays employees who supported us in creating this video. If you found this video on how to get into Barclays useful, hit the like on this video and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We do weekly videos preparing you for internships and grad jobs and have loads more videos on how to get internships and grad jobs in banking. Click here to check those out. If you have any questions, video ideas, or if it's anything you're stuck on, let us know in the comments down below. We usually respond to all the comments we get on our videos. I've been Bonner from Tap In, and I'll catch you guys next time.